So this is one of those impromptu History Hunters episodes because I'm in Memphis, Tennessee, and I wanted to find out a little bit about the cemeteries around here and see if there were some famous people here. There are quite a few, and I'm gonna find them today on this episode of History Hunters. Whenever I find a new place in the country to visit, I always find out if there's going to be some celebrity graves. So this time, I found out that there are some in this cemetery, many who are associated with the country western music industry. And so I'm gonna go check it out and see if I can find some of these. So I arrived here a while ago at the cemetery, and I have to say that I'm pretty impressed with the way it looks. It's a beautiful cemetery, if you can call a cemetery beautiful. So we're at the West Lawn section of the cemetery, close to South Yates Road. And right over here is Red West. You may recognize Red West if you saw his picture. He was in some westerns, but he was also one of Elvis's inner circle friends. The phrase, that's a wrap, is a director's call in Hollywood because Red West himself was an actor. Robert Jean Red West and Elvis Presley met each other while they were attending high school here in Memphis. And West became a close confidant and bodyguard of Presley's and was a member of the Memphis Mafia. Not only did he appear in some of Elvis's movies, such as Viva Las Vegas, but West himself wrote songs for and with Elvis. The relationship came to an end when Vernon Presley who was Elvis's dad, fired West and his cousin Sonny West in 1976. That's when they wrote this tell-all book that detailed how Elvis was abusing drugs and their hope was that he would stop doing it and get some help. West also was a stuntman and actor and you may have seen him on The Wild Wild West and he was a regular on the TV show Baba Black Sheep. He also appeared in Magnum P.I. Apologize for the fact that they're mowing the grass here, but in this northern part of the cemetery is somebody that you probably have heard his music. It's Charlie Rich. Charlie Rich actually appeared in, I think, Every Which Way But Loose with Clint Eastwood, where he actually performed his song. Uh, was it Closed Doors? I think everybody knows that song. No one knows what goes on behind closed doors. When they turn out the lights, I know she'll be leaving with me And when we get behind closed doors And she lets her hair hang down And she makes me glad that I'm a man Oh, no one knows what goes on behind closed doors Charlie Rich is buried right here. Summer, here he is. I think it's a really cool tribute that his likeness is on this marker, and that of his wife, Margaret Rich. She lived another 15 years after he died. Of course, Charlie must have been singing about his wife when he recorded Most Beautiful Girl. She loved jazz like he did, and they were married in 1952. Uh, we dated all through high school, and uh, then one semester out of high school we got uh, engaged and six months after that we got married so uh, we kind of grew up together uh, uh, being from the same small town and all that in Forest City, Arkansas. Ironically Charlie also recorded the song No Headstone on My Grave but he does have one. So I wrote to Charlie just before he passed away and I think from Wherever he was, he sent me a signed photo and he sent me a couple of little commemorative cards that he signed. I think he sent me two pictures actually, and I think not long after that he passed away. So Charlie Rich was known as the Silver Fox. He was born in Arkansas to some poor parents who were cotton farmers. He got interested in music at a young age and after serving in the Air Force, he came here to Memphis where he performed in nightclubs. After he made some demo records for Sun Records, 
Rich was told to keep working at it. His first top 30 hit was Lonely Weekends in 1960, and if you listen to that recording, it sounds very much like Elvis Presley. His career peaked in the 1970s. He recorded, he also wrote Behind Closed Doors, well, followed up that hit with The Most Beautiful Girl in the World, which was a hit on the pop charts. So I think that's pretty cool. He's one of the uh, celebrities I was trying to find out here in the cemetery. Again, it's an impromptu visit to the cemetery. But I thought it would be interesting because I don't think anybody on YouTube has come out here to feature these graves. Pretty expansive cemetery out here, just sprawling over some beautiful acreage. Some well-maintained landscape. There's not a lot of celebrities buried here, but there are some. We're gonna find some more. If you're a big Brad fan, this name is very familiar to you. This is Jimmy Griffin, who was one of the founding members of the you rock band Bread. Cancer's what claimed Jimmy Griffin at the age of 61 in 2005. He went his own way. He found limited success in solo adventures and teaming up with other people. He actually had some small roles in movies, including For Those Who Think Young in 1964 and None But the Brave in 1965. I'm at this mausoleum here trying to find the grave of Sam Phillips, who is founder of Sun Records. He was the one basically who discovered Elvis. And this place just goes on and on and on. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. There's so many of them. Sam Phillips is the one that founded Sun Records and was a key player in the development of rock and roll in the 1950s. Among the artists that he helped promote, besides Presley, were Roy Orbison, Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins, and Johnny Cash. Charlie Rich also recorded with him. He sold Presley's recording contract, if you can believe it, to RCA for a paltry $35,000. This place is huge. It's kind of underground too. It's a couple of stories underground. And uh, I might just have to do what I've done in the past, and that is show you a picture of it. Sometimes there's so many graves, you just can't find them. I am not seeing them. Okay, Sam Phillips, here's a picture of it. I guess we're gonna chalk this up to a failure. This peaceful concrete angel is standing watch over this beautiful place. As the sun sets on a beautiful Memphis summer day. Legendary outlaw Laura Bullion is buried here under the name of Frida Bullion Lincoln. She was born in Texas in 1876 and worked as a prostitute in San Antonio where she got involved with William Carver, a member of Butch Cassidy's Wild Bunch. Laura became a part of the gang and she was especially good at selling goods they stole and is believed that she helped as a lookout in the Great Northern train robbery of 1901 outside of Malta, Minnesota. The gang actually used dynamite to blow up in a car and they helped themselves to about $83,000. She received a five-year prison sentence. She was released from prison in 1905 and lived out her life as a seamstress, dying in Memphis in 1961. 
Marshall Grant, a bass player who played with Johnny Cash, and the Tennessee Two is also buried here. And this special memorial is adorned with musical notes and a brass photo montage. Very cool. He's in an entirely different genre of music, but singer-songwriter Isaac Hayes also is buried in the park under this very creative memorial marker. Hayes is best known for writing the theme song, Shaft, for the 1971 movie by the same title, and also the hit song, Soul Man. We've got one more celebrity here to talk about. It's James Pickney Alley of the famous Hambone comic strip. And here's his grave. You see here a pen. He was a cartoonist. James Pickney Alley was born January 11th, 1885 and died April 16th, 1934. He was the mastermind behind this comic strip that ran from 1916 in 1968. It was called Hambo's Meditations. It was syndicated. It was a one-panel cartoon and originated with a newspaper here in Memphis, Tennessee, the Commercial Appeal, where it ran on the front page. The title character was a stereotypical African-American man with wide eyes and exaggerated lips. He dispensed folk wisdom and caricature dialect. In our politically correct society, people would probably be a little off-put by his humor. All right, I think I'm done here. That's a wrap, just to quote Red West Grave. I've seen just about every grave that I intended to find here, except, as you know, I didn't find Sam Phillips' grave. If you liked what you saw, please give us a comment, a like, and also become a subscriber to this channel. Thank you so much.